The law is that the development approval rests with the land, it doesn't rest with the owner, so when you get an approval for a shop or a house or whatever, it relates to that piece of land, so a new owner can buy that and, and develop it. And that, that happens quite frequently. People get the development approval and then they offer it. Okay. Will there be an opportunity for the community's input or any objections? Yeah, the law is that uh, the minister would have to re-notify it, so he would put it in the paper. I'm sure he would put, uh, put it on display at the council chambers and perhaps somewhere else, but at least get the council chambers. And my intent would be, and I've told all this, is that, uh, that we would have some form of a public submission meeting and maybe an information session where we would put the plans up to council chambers and tell you what's going on. Uh, the Minister uh, has allowed a discount of $625,000, so it's so over half a million dollars, $625,000 in Section 94 contributions. They're contributions that the Council requires developers to pay. So the Minister has given them a discount of $625,000 uh, in order to pay for the roundabout. Now, we were going to construct a roundabout there in, in the future uh, when we had sufficient funds. So. Under this arrangement, the Minister said, well, the roundabout's got to be there, and we've said the roundabout's got to be there, and he's allowed, out of the funds that they would have paid us, 625000 to go towards the roundabout. Now, as well as that, they still have to pay the Council, the community and the Council, another $570,000 in Section 94s. Um, and that's got CPIs with it. So they pay $625,000... Uh, sorry, they have a discount of $625,000. They still have to pay $570,000 to the council. As we see it, that's a, a cost-neutral situation because we're getting the roundabout constructed. We would have had to do that in any case. Uh, and it should be cost-neutral as long as they can build a roundabout for $625,000. So uh, I feel that real estate here in, in Mullumbimby has attracted people who love the uniqueness of the village. And a lot of people have made a big exodus from Byron because they didn't like the multinationals coming in there. So I think it's important for you as a group to stay focused on keeping Mullumbimby that way as well. Um, there's some winners and losers in real estate when you, when you consider shopping centres coming in. It can attract a lot of people, especially the elderly, who, who love to be very close to shopping centres. So it's not all bad news for people who have houses close to this, this um, big corporate affair that's coming upon you. Um, businesses will struggle, for sure. It's not going to be easy, um, because ultimately people will go where the prices take them and they will initially think that they can get a better price at Woolies, but as a business who's gone up against the big um, franchises for many years, I've been in this industry now in, with Red Rose Realty for six years, and I've worked against Hookers and First National and, and um, all of the other franchises, and I've survived because I've offered a special a special heart-to-heart -heart business and I think a lot of people who bought real estate here would realise that there's a unique place for your business against Woolworths that if you can hold it, you'll, you'll, be, um, you'll be well rewarded. But if you can't hold that, it's not going to be easy for businesses. So there's good and bad news. Uh, I fear that um, when, you, when you have a, a large uh, corporate business that comes in like this, there's got to be some hidden agenda that you need to pay attention to because the hidden agenda is with um, big businesses, their bottom line usually means that they're coming to where there's going to be an influx of population. And the only way they can get an influx of population here in Mullum is if there's more development and with um, development that really depends on our council and with the elections coming up, perhaps they're planning on funding uh, a new type of councillor. Much against so, even the site where Woolworths is going. I feel that, that any development in that area will fragment what I consider you know, a, um, a very good feeling within our town centre. I've been in many towns where the town centre has been fragmented and places like Coffs Harbour, it took nearly 40 years for the 
old main street to stop being a crime zone. Um, so I really believe, and in fact I believe that, that my whole position in Santos is to encourage and support um, local community. And when I you know, suddenly get a multinational like Woolworths coming to town, I feel as if that's being attacked. And I feel that all the effort that the main street of Melbourne Dindy has made in creating community you know, can just get wiped out just like that. So I'm very passionate about um, local business. I'm very passionate that, that towns evolve because of local business sort of congregating to serve the people. And, and you even hear Melons talking about we were here to serve. And a lot of businesses actually think that they're there and they feel that they're there to serve. And, and to create community, because it's only through this community that we create a commonwealth. And um, so I, I realised that, for example, 100 years ago, they used to have, um, in a local economy, they used to have, for example, dollars were always spent within the town. And one dollar used to circulate between 20 and 30 times within a town. So it meant that every dollar that you generated you know, within the town, would actually recycle through the town up to 30 times. Um, probably 50 years ago, in the advent of, of corporations and, and transport systems, you know, that started to degenerate. And, um, but even 50 years ago, towns like Malambindi were basically self-sufficient. Um, I also passionately believe that, you know, coming down, you know, the, the global um, climate warming and <laughs> and, and that sort of uh, and, and peak oil things that we need to become much more resilient as communities. So right at the time when I feel and that that we need to strengthen our communities, I feel as if we're being attacked by this this monolithic business. So children really thrive that. on connection, and they don't thrive on disconnection. And in the beginning, of course, mom and dad and brother and sister and family becomes part of what a child connects to. But as a child gets older, um, it really becomes the neighborhood, the community. And children define themselves by the world around them. And then when the world is increasingly corporatized, then everything becomes more anonymous. They have less to define themselves against. And it becomes more synthetic, if you will. Children need connection. And so their connections with the local townspeople, the lo local business people, become very important. It seems kind of kind of common or normal or, or even subtle, but they actually play a huge role in how a child defines himself. For example, my two children live in a small town and they know the name of Trevor the Butcher and Denise and Barry who own the, the clothing, the uh, shoe store, and, um, and Jared who owns the menswear shop, and John who owns the health food store, and these people know my children by name. And they ask my children questions like, how are you today, Sahaja? How did you do with your soccer game? How do you like your new school? What do you think of your teacher? And in, in small but very significant ways, it's another set of eyes that are on my children that tell my children the very important message that they count, that they're part of something bigger, and that they're an important part of something bigger. So um, when you get a large corporate entity like Woolworths coming to a small village or not so small village, what slowly erodes is that sense of connection for children. And what we see when that connection diminishes is our symptoms of disconnection. And we see that everywhere with children. Binge drinking, depression, suicide, early dropout from high school, attentional disorder, oppositional defiancy disorder, all these sorts of syndromes that have been um, labeled now in kids, really showing that kids are exhibiting sy symptoms of a society very disconnected from itself.